control, the uh, the fighter support, the falsification of the the crash site of Flight 93, what actually landed at Cleveland Airport and was put in the Nassau hangar. Uh, I mean, everything was falsified, which the terrorists couldn't have done. The, the, the let's roll phony tape recordings of of cell phone conversations. Cell phones don't work at 10,000 feet and above. They're, they're horizontally oriented uh, antennas. They simply don't work vertically. And I've proven that flying my own aircraft. Uh, they'll work low altitude, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 feet, but that's it. They always cut out by 7,000 feet. I've done it almost every time I fly, hoping one day it works above that to prove the official story, because I don't want to believe the government did it. But they did do it. And, you know, I've got to appreciate Trump for at least tainting the reputation of George W. Bush saying he didn't keep us safe because he didn't. Um, and so it's, it's very important. But, you know, getting to the larger overall picture here, remember that Trump's numbers, despite the attack, I mean, when you look at the pictures, just like what's showing on the screen now, every time they put a picture up of Trump, it is the most odd pose, making him look weird. Uh, there's never a favorable pose that uh, the media puts up of Trump. That shows they're still trying to destroy him, but his poll numbers keep going up. They say they're up to 28% now. I think they're above 30%. Ben Carson, uh, of course, is in second. Ted Cruz is in third. And Jeb Bush is clear down at 5% now in sixth place. I'm not sure, even with the primary system that they've manipulated and loaded so that they can change things midstream, I'm not sure they can resurrect uh, George Bush or Jeb Bush, he's so low. Sure, but I they keep foisting him, they keep force-feeding him, and they'll show him at like a fair in fr at the back of a crowd that isn't even there for him to make it look like it's a crowd for him. Then when they show Trump, they'll show a close shot without the crowd. I mean, they are pulling out the stops. As I say, the conservatives, I mean, I think that they could run Bush and get him to win in a general election. But the problem is getting over the Tea Party conservatives that are running this uh, Republican nomination problem. There's a major rebellion in full force against the Republican establishment, as demonstrated by the re resignation of John Boehner and then uh, Kevin McCarthy to follow him. They can't even hardly get anyone to run um, because... The conservatives know sure, if they, sure. the establishment goes for someone, they're controlled. And if Ryan accepts, they've got controls on Ryan. But they've got to somehow take Trump down. And I think the fact that they've got Rubio boosted in the polls, and I don't know how this comes up unless there's some phony polling going on here, but Rubio's in, in third place now. And, uh, uh, you know, but Ben Carson has read Cleon Skousen's book, uh, My Uncle. He's uh, talked about them online. Uh, you know, plant within the establishment doesn't do that. Um, so I think Ben Carson is legit. And I think he's looking, and that's why Trump and Carson don't criticize each other. I think Carson's looking for a vice presidency slot under Trump. But I can't imagine the establishment allowing Trump to win. But if he should win, like Ronald Reagan won the nomination, in opposition to everything they try to do to stop him. They did learn to control Ronald Reagan, even throwing an assassination attempt at him. And I can guarantee you, if they can control Ronald Reagan, who was a true ideological conservative, they can control Donald Trump, who isn't an ideological conservative. Absolutely. But I don't think Trump consciously is a globalist and wants to destroy America. He wants prosperity. He's not for Cloward and Piven. And I think that's why they hate him so much. And uh, I think he is obviously uh, going to be attacked more. I agree with you. They might try to kill him if he gets into office. But if you look at what the Democratic Party is doing themselves, they are running like they know that their time is up. Uh, I mean, look at the debate numbers. Look at how CNN cut the time. I agree with you that they're looking to put a Republican in. Yeah, they can control the backlash in America against Obama and the Democrats by putting a Republican. Um, they just, there's going to be rebellion in the ranks if they put a Democrat in. And um, so I think that's where we're going, Alex. And, um, but as I say, this is a major, I think there's four major setbacks the globalists have faced. It's the Russians in uh, Syria, which they did not expect. Uh, if Russia was going to go in, they expected them to go in a lot earlier. 
the, the backlash against the immigration wave is a major setback for the globalists. Although I will say that even in Sweden, which is on the verge of bankruptcy in many of the smaller communities because of their welfare state system, they can't even handle their own citizens because of the migrant pull on the economy. Uh, they still are not reversing anything. Sweden is give, not given any hint whatsoever that they're going to stop this insane immigration. They Absolutely. The plan is break these countries up, bring in a client force. Why would the socialists, why would the globalists, why would the Peter Sutherlands openly say to the BBC, as he did, no, we want to get rid of European culture. We want to break it with these migrants. I mean, Sutherland admits this is world government. Well, I think it has to do also with the satanic nature of this conspiracy. I mean, clearly this, you can't, no single person, any mafia, evil, wealthy, powerful person couldn't get this globalist agenda started two or three centuries ago and directed and keep it going past 20 or 30 years. It has to be a revelatory uh, guided uh, conspiracy. And I think there's something, a dimension beyond global government in terms of destruction of culture, destruction of Christianity, destruction of religion, and the creation of a worldly secular society where there is conflict and hatred. I mean, conflict, of course, allows for the police state to continue to suppress free, street, free speech as the anti-migrant uh, terminology and uh, rhetoric increases. You're going to find, you know, we the governments are going to have to say we have to stop allowing people to, to criticize migrants. They're already doing it. Yes. And that's going to, I mean, you're not even allowed to report government uh, statistics on rate now of migrant immigrants in Germany. And that's the suppression of free speech that we're, we're warning about. It is a destructive agenda. I mean, that's when you know you're face to face with evil, when they're rehiring Stasi people to work at Facebook to then take Germans' children away if they speak out against open borders. I mean, this is such a brazen tyranny. I want to go to phone calls in the next segment, the segment after that, then Joel Skousen leaves us at five after. We'll go to Harvey, Ed, Shane, Carol, Tom, and others. We're going to break, but I'll just tell you a story. And I know you used to head up some of the biggest national conservative, you know, coalitions out there trying to take the Republicans back over. It's got to be positive now to see the Tea Party at least partially not being taken over giving Boehner a run for his money, he's having to leave. But when I've talked to different congressmen off air, some of which don't come on the show for reasons that are obvious, um, we don't even push to get them on, but some do come on. It's like being with people in a bunker or a foxhole. Uh, they're just point blank. We're doing our best. These people are criminals. These globalists are dead on. We've got a chance, but I tell you, you know, they may come after all of us. I mean, now when you talk to grown men that are 65, 70 years old, and, and it's like you're in a military operation with them. It, it, it's good to know, finally, we've got people in Congress that really get how big the chips are, how big uh, this is, and understand we're fighting a purely criminal conspiracy. Indeed we are. We've got people like Walter Jones who had the guts to say, you know, to Kevin McCarthy and everybody else, if you've got skeletons in your closet, you better not run for speaker. We don't need another uh, scandal in the Republican Party. And next day, Kevin McCarthy... You know, backs down because he was having an affair with a um, woman Republican from North Carolina, according to uh, my sources in Washington. Well, the globalists know now, though, that evil's gotten so naked that the response of good to rise up to it is now happening. Uh, it's going to be spectacular, is it not, Joel? What we're going to see in the next decade? I mean, won't we see history, uh, you know, legend, prophecy, everything? Is this not an epic time to be alive right now? It is, Alex. Uh, I'm not optimistic, though. Uh, you know, the, the globalists are under fire in these four basic areas where they've had setbacks. But uh, these people won't take no for an answer. They have tremendous power. They have some satanic power behind them. And uh, at the same time, what it's doing, it's causing this great division within society. Our movement is building and getting stronger. But at the same time, they're corrupting even greater numbers of people within the nation uh, from immorality to homosexuality and other things that are taking hold within the nation. So I'm not optimistic that we're going to win back freedom as a nation. I believe that only in pockets of liberty are we going to be able at the local level 
be able to survive what's coming. And I, of course, people have to survive this war that the globalists are preparing to bring down upon us. To It's just like Helmut Kohl said in 1997 when they were arguing and bickering about the Maastricht Treaty. And he said, look, if you don't get it together and accept this EU, you're going to have war in Europe. Everybody looked at one another and said, what does he mean? There's no sentiment for war in Europe. But Helmut Kohl as a globalist was meaning, he couldn't say it, but he meaning if you don't abide by this stuff voluntarily, we're going to give you a war which will drive you into this new world order. And I think that's what we're facing. That's right. That was the German chancellor at the time. And now they have German governors on video saying when Germans are like, we're a town of 3,000. You just brought 3,000 migrants in here. They're telling us what to do, how to live. And they and, the, and they goes, get out then. I mean, it's this answer of we're doing this. We're going to break you. It is just so naked. Look at this headline. School suspends student elections because no, uh, because not enough minorities won. Principles suggest a candidate's race trumps all other factors in an election. That's Infowars.com. Sweden on verge of collapse as illegal immigrants surge into the country. Uh, migrants shut down the tunnel uh, under the English Channel between England and France for the upteenth time again today. Uh, German uh, Daily documents anti-migrant hate speech on Facebook, AFP, with, with serious headlines about, thank goodness, they're going to arrest people. German anti-Islam protest swells on fears about uh, refugee influx. So it goes on and on and on where they invert reality and act like it's weird that people don't want three, four, five million illegals in one year who are just given everything free and who don't want to assimilate and who most of them are military age men and have what two thirds have fake passports. I mean, this is insane. We have a police state supposedly to keep us safe from radical Islam. So you then bring in radical Islam. I want to go to calls, but in one minute, uh, briefly, Joel Skousen, what's the master plan long term in your view between the clash of civilizations between the West and Islam? How is Islam going to be used uh, midterm, long term? Well, Islam is totally incompatible with Christian and, and Western civilization, and it's going to be used as the major conflict creation. And we're already seeing that in Europe and Denmark. I was in Norway last year, and I'll tell you, there's ghettos there. There's crime. Those ghettos, there's unrest. And you can imagine you start to double the number of refugees uh, in these countries, uh, that same thing. What's happening in the U.S. is that they're targeting rural communities to put these 100,000 Muslims, it'll probably be 200,000 Muslims a year, because it does change the conservative balance within rural communities. It doesn't change so much in the large urban areas, but boy, you stick these in small communities and Idaho and Wyoming and Nebraska and Indiana, and you really change the culture and you cause those small governments to say, hey, you've got to come to save us, federal government. We can't handle these influx. And sure enough, the federal government's in there with money, with housing and control. And that's uh, this long-term attack agenda on our culture. And then the feds will referee the culture clash. And again, the Muslims I went to high school with and college with, with were professionals. Their parents were home builders, engineers, they were pretty nice people. I liked them. But the new influxes are poor. They are not assimilating. They're very arrogant. Instead of being like, hey, I'm in, you know, embarrassed that I'm here getting stuff free, it's a very chest out, face out, you better watch it attitude that the left is instilling in them. Very, very destructive. And then the, the left loves all this when it should be totally incompatible with their whole lifestyle of we're going to teach your five-year-olds how to have gay sex, well, the Muslims would chop their heads off for that. But they're very angry as well. And um, you see that in every video in Europe, just the anger and the hatred against Western society because you don't give us enough fast enough. And once again, I want to emphasize, it's shove them into your midst and then you never send them back. And that's one of the problems with the Russian... Uh, pro, uh, intervention in Syria, if they solve that Syria problem within a year and the Russians say, hey, you're welcome to come back, the Europeans are going to be in a real problem. They're going to have right. some excuse to say why we're not going to send them that's back right. once peace has been established. Well, that's the Peter Sutherland migrant plan at the UN. He said, he, he writes essays saying it. We got rid of the borders. We imploded the Middle East. We're now going to flood. Well, you've got to stabilize the Middle East like the Russians are trying to do so that doesn't happen.
It's just incredible. Harvey, you're on the air from Florida with Joel Skousen, the editor of World Affairs Brief. Go ahead. Well, hello again, Alex. Hello, Joel Skousen. And this call is in memory of uh, 